He's the world's strongest man as well. The beauty of strong man is in its purity. You can have a sport like basketball or baseball and think to yourself, yeah, but in the end, what's the point? To entertain, to profit? Is the ball jumping through hoops? So am I. But in strong man, the whole idea is crystal clear. I want to be the strongest person to ever exist. You might argue that Tyson in his prime could beat Ali, or that LeBron would have beaten Mike in 1v1. Or you think that you have to judge a whole different category, strongest man. competitor against the competition of the time. The good news is that in Strongman, there's no argument. How big of a rock did your favorite guy lift? Yeah, well, my favorite guy lifted a bigger one, case closed. A problem with other sports is that a lot of them require a lot of skill, but people won't know unless they see you do it. You can be the best skater in the world, but unless you're at the skate park or thrift shop, no one's going to have any idea. But if you're six foot nine, 400 pounds, and cause the plane to list to one side on takeoff, people are going to say, hey, is, is, that, is that half Thor Bjorkson? And your lifetime of struggle will have been worth it for that moment of validation. Even the names of the world's strongest men sound powerful. Hafthjord Bjornsson, Zajuna Saviskas, Alexei Novikov, Magnus Ver Magnusson, Martins Lysis, Mateusz Kielikowski, and of course, Brian, which I pronounce perfectly on account of my English language abilities. The great thing about Strongman is you don't even need a reference point to understand yeah, you know, him kind of how good though. these athletes are. Every guy watching MMA or boxing always thinks they could land a punch or two on Floyd Mayweather, or maybe even knock him out with their lucky haymaker. But when you watch Strongman, you have to say, admittedly, I'll probably yeah, you're putting it here, plan. do that one, as you nervously glance at your wife to make sure she's not leaving you. Strongman competitions have their roots in many historical tests of strength, from Scottish Highland Games to feats of strength by circus strongmen, and even going back to ancient Greek mythology when Sisyphus was punished by Zeus to endlessly push a boulder up a hill, only to watch it roll back down as he reached the top. The story goes that every morning he would wake up, <laughs> inhale two scoops of creatine, huff some ammonia, watch a Larry Wheels video, and get ready to smash a new PR, bringing joy and meaning to his otherwise tedious and wasteful life. Similarly, one of the hallmarks of Strongman are the Atlas Stones, named after the Greek titan Atlas, who is often depicted holding up the heavens and earth on his shoulders. While we now know it's actually just turtles all the way down, at the time the concept was quite inspirational. The 80s were when Strongman first became popular as an actual sport, creating legends like Bill Kazmaier, John Paul Sigmerson, and a host of iconic Strongman that caused many to consider this the first golden age of the sport. Prior to this, Strongman featured a ragtag group of strength sports athletes competing on the side of their main gigs, and the world's strongest man organizers still thought it would be a good idea that instead of using weights, they put a couple girls in cages, attach them to a bar, and have an event called the Girl Lift. While culture has moved on since then, it's only with hindsight we're now able to realize how fucked up it was to ask a girl what she weighs. During the 80s, organizers True. realizing that women were real people and not physical objects whose only purpose was to be lifted for as many repetitions as possible, tried instead to objectify the men, ensuring everyone had the shortest shorts possible, and for a brief period introduced sumo into strongman, where the legendary strongman Bill Kazmaier basically scared his opponents into giving up. While events like sumo were quickly thrown out because even though it provided the much needed boost to strongman's sex appeal, it was simultaneously when Mr. Olympia had fully transitioned from posing trunks to posing thongs, cancelling the extra viewership potential and creating one of the most popular hobbies for straight men ever since. Bill <laughs> Kazmaier was the man who dominated strongman in the early 80s. He won World's Strongest Man in 1980, 81, 82, and then the organizers banned him from participating for essentially being too good. Well, I'm suspicious of that what? narrative because it doesn't can be an, but being too good. make any sense. And the casino. I'm going to run with it because it upholds my fantasy. He was athletic, an elite power lifter, and all around built for strongman. One of the greats of strongman in the 80s and a rival to Bill Kazmaier was John Paul Sigmerson, who won World's Strongest Man four times and was famous for doing a 1,005 pound axle deadlift and exclaiming, There's no reason to be alive if you can't do deadlifts. He then died later doing deadlifts. If you think I'm giving you the perfect layup to write a pun in the comments, you will regret it in Valhalla. Nevertheless, despite great competition in the 80s, strongman as a sport in and of itself spent most of this decade and the next lost in an identity crisis trying to figure out what kind of sport it was and what really made a man strong. Was it his mind? Was it his heart? Or was it being able to lift a 345 pound truck above your head? No one truly knew for some reason, and strongman fell into a competitive lull. Other than having arm wrestling that ended how every popular arm wrestling clip usually does, the 90s were an overall boring time for strongman, as more important things were taking up people's time, attention, and money. 
I was being born without my permission. The internet. I'm missing, I'm missing it's about the technique, I think. No, I did one that out. being called a fad by Nobel Prize winning economists. Capital investment was pouring into children's cartoons, serial advertisements, and anything to sell mass manufactured products to Western millennials with an exorbitant markup. While all of these pieces of plastic were fucking awesome, it wasn't the time or place to lift heavy things. But the time was soon to come. In the early 2000s, Strongman was still somewhat dormant, but re-emerging from hibernation, where the only person winning things because of rules around international competition and lack of anyone really being all that good was Marius Pujanowski, who admittedly was the first Strongman ever who wasn't quite as statically strong, but was really fast and had great endurance on account of being jacked out of his goddamn mind. While he is one of the most athletic and decorated Strongmen in history, popularized the sport immensely because everyone thought, well, why, why isn't he really fat? and maybe one of the best strongman ever, pound for pound, I will reiterate that the spirit of strongman, where our hearts and souls have always been, is who can lift the biggest rock. And he did not usually lift the biggest rock. And so in the eyes of many oh, observers okay. of the sport, we all thought, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose him as the best strongman ever, but, but this is, of course, how I would look if I, if I, if I tried strongman. With this new popularization of World's Strongest Man and a shift in marketing due to internet popularity, many event changes occurred, shifting from somewhat heavy things done quickly to extremely heavy things done some of the time. And after 2008, when everyone's leveraged CLOs went tits up, it was obvious uh, to most men that if you couldn't get rich, you might as well get rich. And we had a well-rounded and dynamic international competition where Zadruna Saviscus established himself as arguably the greatest strongman of all time. He was immensely statically strong, known particularly for his overhead press, but more importantly, he ultimately cemented an image in our collective brain cells of what a strong man looks like. A regular tall fat guy, but with a weightlifting belt. As Big Z moved towards retirement in the mid-2010s, he ushered in the peak of what has been called the era of the Giants, where the likes of Brian Shaw and Half Thor Bjornsson, 6'8 and 6'9 respectively, became the focus of the sport, along with Eddie Hall, who is instead about 6'8 in circumference. Most strong men historically have been about 6'3, barely qualifying them for Tinder. And the challenge of these new height differentials meant that one of the most important factors in any strongman competition would be what the events were going to be. Because generally speaking, any event where you needed to move something along the y-axis, like deadlift or overhead press, would favor hydraulic refrigerators like Eddie Hall. While events that required weight, leverage, or grip advantages like the Fingles Fingers, Truck Pull, or the Keg Toss would favor the even bigger boys. The Giants era was really a new golden age of hype around if these new human blueprints were going to destroy all previously known limits. And while Brian Shaw dominated for several years through overall well-roundedness, near the end of this era, it ultimately became more pursuit of breaking world records in specific categories. Eddie only won World's Strongest Man once, then said, fuck this, I'm going to be the first person ever to deadlift 1,100 pounds. Half Thor also won World's Strongest Man once, then said, I'm the guy who launched Pedro Pascal's career, I'm going to lift this tree, then I'm going to deadlift exactly one kilo more than Eddie. This annoyed Eddie, and they of course settled the dispute the only way that makes sense. Taking the obvious next step, all three of them are now YouTubers. Since the end of their rivalry in the late 2010s, we began the modern era of strongman, which seems to be the age of specialization. While everyone wants the title of world's strongest man, especially me, focusing on individual records is much more practical. Guys like Tom Staltman, who is himself six foot eight, has mastered the art of lifting the biggest rock over a bar. Mateus Kielikowski has mastered the art of lifting the biggest rock onto your shoulder, and Eddie Hall has mastered lifting the biggest rock for the most ad revenue. Guys like Martins Lisi's seems to just be doing his own thing. Despite there still being healthy competition, the biggest debate in strongman is the direction the sport is going in. While the last World's Strongest Man was won by my fellow Canadian and time traveler Mitchell Hooper, event selection still is the determining factor in most strongman contests. I think that a good way to address biased event selection is create events where the weight and what you're supposed to do with it is standardized, but the shape of the weight is not revealed until the day of the event. This allows athletes to prepare for the event, but not specialize specifically for the task. For example, you could have the small rock, the big rock, medium rock for reps, rock toss, rock pull. Really, the options are endless. endless. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Now, okay. well, you may not be able to be strong.